Hey guys, we're going to have a quick look at the rafter tool and we're going to have a look at the beam tool and we're going to have a look at the post tool. There's some updates there for you. So let's have a quick look. Start with the posts. All right, so you can notice that I have some posts here and they have these little connectors on the bottom of them or joist boots or post shoes or whatever you like to call them. I'm going to show you how to get them in there. I'm going to show you how to do some beams and I'm going to show you how to do some cool stuff. Let's have a start with our posts. Okay, so I've chosen my post tool here, my, and the first one I've chosen is my timber or lumber post, depending on where you're at, um, my height of my post, but then I also have include post support. And you can notice there that I can now actually add different types of post support. So let's just start with our first one, and we're gonna just go to this line here, and bang, we have our post support, pretty much traditional or standard, most of the way around the world. The next one, I'm going to choose my post bracket recessed, which is more of an architectural type of post support. And if we have a look at that, you can see what's going on there. Now, if I wanted to change the sizes of these being an architectural bracket, essentially, I can go in and I can change the sizes before I draw. So I'll just do one more here for you and we'll call it a, uh, let's just change our flange height to say 200, just so you can really see this. Make it 50. Obviously, if you're using Imperial, uh, you will have these in feet and inches. I'm just using metric at the moment. And I'm going to go in here, I'm going to go submit. Right, and you can see that it's upgraded the size of the bracket and the amount that, that goes up the center of the post, which is usually because the engineer needs a greater wind load or bracing. All right, so I'm going to delete this one out of here because I don't need it for this exercise. And I'm going to grab these two posts. So what I'm actually doing is spacebar and moving across until I hit my post, they've gone blue. I'm now going to zoom into where I want to move them to. So obviously if I grab the other side of the post, it would have been a problem. So I'm just gonna move, but push control, and therefore I can zoom out and zoom back into where I want to place them. Notice that now I'm in the right spot because I grabbed them from the right spot. And if I go divided by, divided by say six, enter, I basically had six posts in between, or seven equal spacings. All right, so that's how to do your posts. Okay, let's say for instance, we wanted to add some beams to uh, these posts. What I'm gonna do is always space bar to click out of something to choose a new tool. All right, so I'm gonna use my beam tool, and in this case, I'm gonna use LVL, and I'm gonna use metric here, uh, and I'm going to choose, just say, a smaller beam, 150.45. Obviously, I'll use a span table uh, to go through and do this. When I zoom in on my post here, you'll notice that I can choose any axes, but I can also click my down arrow, and it will allow me to put my beam where I select. Okay, so there, and I'm going to go across to here, across to here. And you know what, this beam here, I'm actually going to type in a size. I'm going to say uh, three meters. Push enter twice. Now you can see I'm short. So one of the benefits with the new beam tool is that I can actually select that beam and go right click, beams, extend beam. Right, and therefore it's now lined up with the outside of my uh, other beam there. However, I may want, want to miter my beam. So if I go in here and go, select two beams, so space bar, shift, Just click on them both and go right click, beams, mitre beams. You'll notice it mitered those beams for me, All right? Because in a lot of situations, we'll, we won't butt joint, we'll actually mitre beams. Okay, what I also want to do is, say for instance, we took out a couple of posts. So we took this post out here and we took out this post here, it means that I'm gonna need a larger beam from here to here. So if I go to my beam selector and go right click, beams, uh, split beams, I now have, you can see this circle coming up and it wants to line up with things every time I hover over them. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hover over the side of my post because I want to cut my beam this way. If you want a 45 year beam, you could do it like that as well. And I'm going to push shift, right? And now I can go to the center of my post and left click once. I can also go down to the center of this post down here, shift again, go to the center of my post, and you'll notice it sort of snapped to the center there. All right. And then if I push enter, 
or return, I now have three different beams. And seeing that these uh, two spacings are larger, I'm going to need a larger beam. So if I right click and go to beams and go to edit beam, I can now actually go in and change my beam size. Let's go down to a larger beam size. It's really easy to see. Obviously you're using span tables or engineers guidelines to do this, or you may know them off the top of your head. Okay, so it increased the size of my beam and depending on where I wanted to line up, if I wanted the bottom to line up, I would do that and check my rafters. However, if I wanted the top to line up, I would go to M or move uh, and I would just move it down. So M is the keyboard shortcut and this is the toolbar, the tool for move there. All right, what else can we show you? We also need to potentially do rafters. Now there's a really good um, tool, uh, rafter tool uh, that you can go, if you click on inside of a, a rectangle and put a rafter in here, oh, you know, I'll actually do one here. So we can automate the rafters. There is some tutorials in there. I'm just going to quickly do this one for you guys. We'll make this a hip roof, right? And that's basically a face, which is the outside of my post there. Obviously you can see I've offset it a touch. I can move it up if I want to the height of my posts here on my blue axis, so push my up arrow, and therefore you can now see that I have that. But because I offset my, my beams there, I actually need to make my face a little bit bigger. So offset, which is F, allowed me to offset that. And if I went in here and just went double click, shift, delete, it now means that my face goes all the way to the outside of the beam. You can see it just selected there. If I went right click roof or went to up to my roof tool up the top there, I could essentially go create roof. And what this is going to enable me to do is choose the pitch or a ratio and overhangs and everything I need to do. All right, that put my roof on, but I actually need rafters in my roof. So if I go and drill inside of my roof here, keep on clicking until I get to, oh, I didn't want that, I was in the wrong one. If you ever get that, what that is is that we have a layer turned on there. It's two ways. If you don't actually want it, you can just go delete. However, it's not what we want to do. We actually want to um, get into our roof face. So inside of your layers or tags, you can turn your different things on and off down here. So roof waterproofing, if I turn that off, it's gone. Okay, but getting to the point here is I'm going to go to roof and I'm going to go uh, roof framing create roof framing, and you'll notice it's open up here. I can now give it my rafter spacings. I can give it everything. If you want to just hover down here, my battens, then you can do whatever it is that you want to do there. Choose your material sizes and just go submit. All right, let's get outside of that and have a quick look here. We're going to delete our roof out of here. And now you can see that I have all my rafters with battens and everything under, that I require. I can go through and start to use the beam tool and split them on the rakes to do that. But I'm going to show you that in another area because there's more to this beam tool than meets the eye. So you can see that I've got some rafters in here that are basically pitching into a ridge. It's, it's, very, it's not a custom kind of a setup. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to show you how I did that. I'm just going to use my tape measure here and I'm just going to add a couple of square lines here for me whatever they're going to be, at whatever spacing. So tape measure tool. Right, so I'm going to want some ceiling joists to go in on a rake here uh, on that line of that hip there, which as you can see is off the angle. And I'm also going to want to um, put some rafters and a hip in there. So let's have a look at how we do that. What I can do is go back to my beam tool. Now you need to make sure that nothing else is selected. So for instance, if I had this beam selected and I forgot it was selected and went over here and tried to draw and I changed the size and started to draw here, it's going to actually change, I'll change the type here, so you can see. It's going to actually change the original one, you see? Because it was selected and computers are dumb. We need to tell them what to do, right? So it changed that beam to a different type. I needed to get outside of a spacebar and click outside of it and then go back to my beam tool and then choose what size I wanted to do and or what member type I wanted to use. And I'm going to go in here, I'm going to choose a larger, let's say a large beam here. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to just simply 
trace it up this far here because I want it to head, head up to here. So if I select that beam and go right click extend beam and extend it to here, it actually mitered that beam. You can see that I needed to move it over a touch because I was on the other side. I could have justified my beam. But essentially, what that did is it mitered that well, hip in this case for me. Now, if I went in here and said, okay, I'm going to add more beams, or in this case, joists, I can change my lumber type and go and put in my joists. I'm just gonna go from here to here, right? And I don't want to go and draw them all in manually, so I'm actually gonna click this one here and go move, control, I'm gonna type in the span, so two feet or 600, enter. I'm gonna times it by, say, five, right? And you can see I have five joists there. Right, if I select these five joists, shift, spacebar, shift, select, right click and go extend beams, and I want them to line up with here, You'll notice it mitered all those in nicely. So if I looked at the other side, you can see that it's mitered those beams in nicely. However, I also may want to use these as rafters as well. Here's where it becomes versatile and quick. It enables you to do complex work very quickly. Right, so I push control and moved along and I'm going to actually use Q, uh, which is a keyboard shortcut for rotate, which is this one here, Q. I'm lined up with that face there. Now, if I move around, you'll notice that I can do that, or I can use my left arrow key or right arrow key to get on red or green axes. All right, so once I've figured out I want it to line up with there, I'm gonna go shift, hold it to there, and I'm going to turn up the pitch that I require. So let's say I want it to be, I don't know, uh, you know, I'll line it up with the bottom of my hips, probably a better idea. Right there. I want all of these to line up and be pitched in here. Okay, so if I go right click, beams, extend beam, and choose the size of the hip I want it to be, it pitched them in. So you can cut things multiple times or extend multiple times. If I wanted my overhang to come out, say, here, on a strange angle, say something like this, you can see that these rafters here are going to extend to there and these rafters I'm going to extend there. I'll show you what that means. Right, right click, extend beams. And there we go. They lined up perfectly with where I chose. Same with these other two. Right click, extend beams. It doesn't matter where I choose to line them up with, but if I looked at that top down, or I pulled this down, you'll see what happened. Right. Huge time saver, guys. Right, so if you're gonna get into custom or, or complex roofs or complex systems, this is excellent for doing straight from existing geometry. This is, these are excellent for customizing jobs to make them work properly. Uh, so give it a try, guys. I'd be interested to see how it works out for you. Uh, if you like the video, push like below. If you dislike it, push dislike and tell us why because we're doing our best to ensure that these videos are going to help you uh, with your day-to-day -day work. And don't forget, guys, whatever you do, you can quantify everything that we've drawn. So one last thing, everything that I've drawn in there for you today, if I click take off, it's gonna generate a bill of quantities and whether it be framing, and I'm going to look at my beams or plates, it's gonna give me the length of every single beam in total, or if I actually want to know the cut length of those beams, all the information is there. If I want to associate a price with those beams, let's say that they were $15 a meter, it's giving me the total price. If I want to give a vendor to it and said maybe a hardware supply company here, I can now create a purchase order from everything I drew. So drawing is one thing, uh, actually quantifying and delivering purchase orders to suppliers uh, is another thing. So here's everything that's been assigned to my hardware supply company, the price that I've allowed for, and you'll also notice if I forgot to put in a price for nails here, um, that I have a zero figure. You've got your comments and everything is required. Guys, very comprehensive. I look forward to hearing what you've got to say, and if you've got any questions, ask them below. Thanks guys, cheers.